This is the day that the Lord has made. I said, this is the day that the Lord has made. And so if we know that this is the day that the Lord has made, what are we going to do about it? We're going to be rejoicing. We're going to be made. Is there anybody in here that says before a word gets preached, before a song gets offered, I'm going to lift my hands up to Is there anybody in here that's just excited, that's grateful, that is revived to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Is there anybody in here that can make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Is there anybody in here that has served the Lord with gladness and that has come to come before his presence with singing? That knows that he is the Lord and he is our God. That he has made us and that we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So what are we going to do about it? We're going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why are we doing it? For the Lord is good. Y'all don't, don't seem like y'all serve a good God. I said the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. I just want you to look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I serve a good God. I, I serve a good God. I serve a good God. And while you're watching your neighbor, just go ahead and say, neighbor, are you ready to go and worship with me? Are you ready to go into worship with me? Amen. Welcome. Welcome one. Welcome all to our revival, our week Wednesday revival. We are excited. We are thrilled to go higher in worship and higher in word on this evening. We've got some great people in store, and so we're extremely excited and honored for what God has ordained for this day. At this time, as we go higher in worship, I ask that you join me in welcoming Mr. Antoine Barnes as he comes forward and sings. Mr. Antoine Barnes as he comes forward and leads us in worship. Amen. If you love Jesus, why don't you put your hands together? Let's give God a real good praise all over the room. Come on. Let's, we honor the Lord for being here tonight. Just do me a favor. Just look at somebody and say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do. Come on, tell your neighbor, I came to praise him. Come on, can we take about 30 seconds? Just open up your mouth. Let's give God the best praise that we have. Why? Because he's been good. Come on, look at somebody and say, neighbor, he, he's been real good to me. Tell him I owe him the praise tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands all over the room. Hallelujah. Find the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, find the glory. This is what we want God to do tonight. Revive us again. One more time. Hallelujah. Come on, it's all right to lift your hands. Find the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, find the glory, revive us again. I got to do this one time. Let the church see yes. Come on, we might as well praise while we're here. Yes. Come on, all over the house. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yes. I need you to open your mouth and shout, Yes, Lord. Feel me, Lord. This is what we want God to do tonight. Feel me, Lord. Hallelujah. Feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. 
Then one more time, open your mouth and shout, yes, Lord. Blow mighty wind. Anybody want the wind of God to blow in this house tonight? Blow mighty wind. Hallelujah. Blow mighty wind. I pray that the Lord blow his wind tonight. Blow mighty wind. Blow mighty wind. Now one more time, lift your hand and shout, yes, Lord. Now come on, give God a real good praise. Hallelujah. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we may ask or think. We just shout in the atmosphere, he's able. Come on, one more time, he's able. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands, everybody. Come on, let's lift this up in the house tonight. Come on, clap those hands, everybody. Let's go right into it. Come on. God is able, you say. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill, yeah. He's going to fulfill every so don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up. Come on. Up He's able. He's able. Hallelujah. Can we get those mics in the back? Come on, clap your hands, everybody. He's able. He's able. Come on, everybody, lift your voice. Let's do it one more time. Come on. See, God is able, you say. God is able to do. Just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill, yeah. He's going to fulfill every promise. Every promise. Every promise, promise to you. you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Come on, y'all sing tonight. He won't give up. Hey, he he he's able. He's able. Whoa, whoa. Y'all, come on. See, he's able. He's able. Yeah. Let's go up, y'all. Here we go. Hey, hey, God is able. God is able to do. That's what he said. That's what he said. He will do. He's going to fulfill, yeah. He's going to fulfill. Every promise. Every promise to you. So don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. We're going to heal. Somebody scream. Come on. He is able. Whoa, whoa. Come on, church. See, he is able. He's able. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go on one more, y'all. Y'all got to count your hands here. Hey, hey, God is able. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill it. Yeah. He's going to fulfill it. Yeah, every promise. Go to the one, go to the one. Y'all clap your hands, come on. That's what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise, promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you, because he is able. Clap your hands, come on. He's able. He's able. Come on, let's do this part together. I need y'all to repeat after me. Let's do it like this. Come on. He said, oh, 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 See, he's 
favor look at your neighbor just encourage them tonight tell them don't give up I ain't got enough time y'all don't give up without the music come on they need to hear themselves encouraging each other come on tell them don't give up without the music come on don't give up 
Come on, look at them in the face and tell them they need encouragement. Don't give up. Don't give up. I don't care what the devil said. Yeah, hey, 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 don't give up. Don't give up. Cause he won't give up on you. Yeah. Throw your hands up and shout. He's able. Can't let it go. If we serve a God who's able to control, who's able to shift situations, who's able to change trajectories, aren't you so glad that the God that we serve is able to do this? He's able to do that. Is there anybody in here that's seen him do it? That says, I don't got to see. I know he's able. I know he's able. I know he's able. I know he's able. Now unto him who is able. Ephesians 3, Ephesians 3, verse 20. I already said part of it. I feel as though we should be led here today as we continue in worship. Ephesians 3, verse 20 simply exclaims, Now unto him. that is able <laughs> to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. According to the power join with me in prayer as we continue in worship. God we say thank you God, thank you for life. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for being able. God, as we enter into this place of worship, allow us to remember that through it all, you're able. And if you've done it before, you'll be sure to do it again. And so as we enter into this place of worship, allow us to remember that it's only through your power. Allow that thought and that verse to remind us to grasp unto the power that is with only in you. So that when we wake up, we don't have to worry about what the day is going to look like. Because we know that you are able. And since you're able, allow us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Allow your glory and your power and your spirit to reign in this place like only it can. Allow our hearts and our minds to be open and receptive of your worship and your word. And we'll be sure to continue to give you all glory, all honor, and all praise that's due to your name. And the only name that matters in the name of the one that's still able. In Jesus' name we say amen. 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 At this time, we, I am excited, hippopotamus happy, as some would say, to introduce a choir that has come from Virginia's Golden Shore, a place that we all adore, where some of us say, behold. The amen. I'm excited to welcome, to bring us further in worship, 
the Norfolk State University Gospel Choir under the direction of Pastor Patrick Riddick. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, can we put our hands together? You got to try. Come on, says this. Lord, you're great. Lord, you're great. And greatly, and greatly to be praised. Lord, you're great. Lord, you're great. And greatly to be praised. Lord, you're great. Lord, you're great. And greatly, and greatly to be your word, come on, put your hands together if you know the Lord is worthy to be praised. Come on, let's say it again. Come on, Lord, you're great, Lord, you're great, and you're greatly too. Lord, you're great, and you're greatly too. Lord, you're great, and you're greatly too. Lord, you're great, yes, you are. You're worthy, you're worthy to be praised. Come on, that's it. We come to celebrate Jesus. Hey, I like this one. Your name is great. Your name is great. And greatly. And greatly to be praised. Your name is great. Your name is great. And greatly to be praised. Your name is great. Yes, Lord. And greatly to be praised. You're worthy. You're worthy to be One more, can we talk about the power of the Lord? Come on, everybody. Come on, your power, your power is great, and you're greatly, and greatly to be great. Your power, your power is great, and greatly to be great. Your power, your power is great, and greatly, and greatly to be great. Your worthy, your worthy to be Let's go to the band. Are you ready? Everybody, it's a command. Are you ready? Come on. Let's praise him. Pray, praise, him. praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Exalt his holy. Come on, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him. Exalt his holy name. Come on. Everybody, pray him. Praise him. Praise him. Exalt his holy name. Come on, let's lift him. Praise him. Praise him. Exalt his holy name. Come on, now clap your hands. Come on, I see you clapping. Put those hands together, everybody. Out. We come to praise him this evening. Come on, are you ready? Everybody, lift your voice. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Exalt his holy name. Say it again. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Exalt his holy name. Here we go. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. He's worthy. To your mind, praise him, praise him, praise him. Everybody, clap your head. Come on, clap your head. One more time, praise him. Let's go. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Ooh. Praise him. Come on in, praise him. Exalt him. Exalt him. Your what? Your to be praised. Come on, give him glory. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad. Come on, put those hands together and give God praise. Give him glory and honor. Amen. Listen, can we also take a moment while we're celebrating, thank God for Minister Antoine Barnes, who led us into worship. And what can we say about this dynamic choir? Norfolk State Gospel Choir is in the house. Hey. 
Amen. Also, can we take a moment, if you're here, all clergy, pastors, and preachers, if you would just stand all over the building just so we can recognize your presence on tonight. Come on, can we give all of these preachers, Pastor Yancey, Pastor, uh, so many pastors, I don't want to start calling names, but Pastor Cofield and so many others, thank you for your participation on tonight and your presence. It's giving time. Let's give God a hand clap of praise as we prepare to give. Our leaders are coming to set our tables in order on tonight because we want to make sure that we make room and give space for this preacher who's going to come on tonight. Amen. Is anybody excited about the word on tonight? Okay, y'all sound a little dead. Is anybody excited about the word on tonight? Amen. There's a preacher in the house. Amen. Listen, this is what I'm asking every person that can and will. If you would just sow a seed of $20 on tonight, that's all we're asking for. Every person can give $20 on tonight. Amen. Y'all spend that at McDonald's. Amen. And so, and so we can do that on tonight. Amen. Everyone standing with that gift in your hand. If you don't have 20, come as close to that $20 seed as you, if you, as you can on tonight. If you're giving electronically, there are many platforms. We have Cash App. That is dollar sign FBC Den. FBC Den is the Cash App. And if you want to give other platforms, it's on our uh, church website. Uh, but the easiest way to give right now is either through monetary giving or through cash out. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give on tonight. We pray, Father, that you will receive our act of worship unto you. We pray, God, that as we come giving, God, we pray, God, that you will honor our gift and stretch it in such a way that, God, we will be able to meet every need in this house. Not only that, God, but every giver that gives, I pray, God, that you will bless them in such a way that their needs in their house will be met as well. We thank you on tonight for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. We all said in concert, amen. 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 Follow the directions of the ushers that they come leading you to the Lord's table on tonight. Put it monitors, yes. Put monitors in this mic, go ahead. Yeah. No one. There is no one before you. are God. You are God. You are great God. You are great. You are great. You are great. You're a great God. We bow. We bow down and exalt you. You are God. Let's say it again. You are great God. You are great Yes, you are great God. There is no one before you. Yes, Lord. You are God. Let's say it again. Oh, you are great. You are great, God. Yes, you are, you are great, God. There is, there is no one before you. You are God. You are great, big God. You are great, God. Yes, you, you are. are great, God. We, we bow down and exalt you. You Let's are Let's go to the band. You are great. You're a great God. Great God. You're a great God. Yes, you You're are. You're a great God. I praise You're you. You're a great God. I lift You're you up. You're a great God. Magnify You're you. You're a great God. Exalt You're you. You're a great God. You're worthy. You're a great God. Yes, you You're are. You're a great God. Nobody. You're a great God. Like my Jesus. You're a great God. Nobody. You're a great God. Like my King. You're a great God. You're mighty. You're a great God. Oh, no. You're a great God. Oh, 
power of sin. Great God. Your power. Great God. Great God. Great God. Great God. Yes, you are. I appreciate you. I praise you. Adore you. I love you. Nobody like my King. Nobody like my Jesus. Great God. Great God. Great God. We bow down and go. We bow down. We bow down and go. We bow down. We bow down and go. You are God. You are God. You are great. You are great God. Great God. You are great God. Yes, you are. You are great God. You are great God. You are great God. Put your hands you are great God. together. You are great God. If you know, you are great God. had it not you been for the Lord you are great God. who was on my you are great God. side, where would you are great God. But he reached out, picked me up, turned me all around, placed my feet. You're a great God. 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 Great God.
Somebody say, don't take all that. It may not take all that for you. But when I think about what the Lord has done for me, I got to open my mouth and give God the best praise. Is there anybody here? Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know what you came to do. But I came to serve and lift up a great God. And if you came to bless a great God, take a moment and give your God the best praise you can give him. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. If he's been good to you, say so. Excuse me, y'all, but I just had a flashback when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul cries out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you can't tell it, let me tell it. what the Lord has done for me. I'm sorry. We got a preacher in the house. We got a preacher in the house. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. Y'all be seated. We got a preacher in the house. <laughs> I hear grandma say, when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, my soul cr I'm sorry. We got a preacher in the house. Y'all be seated. Don't y'all act like that on a Wednesday night. Don't you act like God's been good to you on a Wednesday night. Don't you act like he's made a way for you on a Wednesday night. Don't you act like he's brought you through seen and unseen. Don't you act like he's been blessing your life. Hey, oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> well, if you're going to do it, go ahead on and do it. You don't need no music. What you waiting on? You, you don't need no drums. What you waiting on? All you need is a flashback. Yeah. All you need is a flashback of where he's brought you from. Well, listen, let's just take 20 seconds and go ahead on and bless them. Go ahead on, take 20 seconds and go ahead on and bless them. Go ahead on, take 20 seconds, put something in your hand, put something in your feet, and give him glory. Woo!
you say. What you say? Come on, lift your hands and give God praise. Come on. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. He's done mighty things in your life. Come on. Just real quick. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me. Real quick. In such a special way. And yes, I, I lift you up. I lift you up. I magnify. And I magnify your name. Oh, that's why. Come on, one time, my heart, my mind, my soul belong. Let's say it together. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me. You paid the price for me. Where did he do it? Way back. Way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. And, and I magnify your name. Oh, that's why. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, that's why. That's why. That's why my heart. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart. Come on, put those hands together as you take your seats on tonight. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. On a Wednesday night, we came to bless his name on tonight. And the Lord is prevalent in this place even now. His presence is hovering in here. Don't you feel better now? Oh, uh, after a long day, after a long week, don't you feel better that you was able to come into the presence of God? and worship him on tonight. Listen, I'm excited on tonight. I know we have an introduction, but I'm just going, well, no, I, I don't want to take away from that. Let's do the introduction of the preacher. I'm excited to have him on tonight. He's my friend and he's my brother. And we're going to give him a formal introduction. Following that, ask that Pastor Riddick will come back along with the Norfolk State Gospel Choir and give us another selection. And then after that, I ask that you would stand on your feet and receive our proclaimer for the hour. God bless you. Sharp is a proud native of Lithonia, Georgia, and a son of the Greater Trapper 
Pine Crest Baptist Church, the House of Hope Atlanta. Sharp earned a Bachelor's of Art degree in Religion from Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia in 2013, a Master of Theological Studies degree from Vanderbilt University Divinity School in Nashville, Tennessee in 2016, and a Master of Theology degree from Canyon School of Theology at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia in 2018. Currently, Sharp is pursuing a PhD in African American preaching and sacred rhetoric at Christian Theological Seminary in Indianapolis, Indiana. Pastor Sharp is one of the proud charter members of the Academy of Preachers and was the youngest inducted into the Martin Luther King Jr. Board of Preachers at Morehouse College in 2018. He also taught as an adjunct professor in the Religion and Philosophy Department at Morehouse College. Among his many distinctions, Pastor Sharp is a member of the Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Pastor Sharp faithfully served as campus pastor of the House of Hope Macon for three and a half years. Under Sharp's dynamic and spirit-led leadership, the church experienced astronomical growth both spiritually and numerically. Since December 31st, 2019, Pastor Sharp has faithfully served as the senior pastor of the historic Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. Sharp is honored to follow in the pastoral lineage of the late Reverend Clay Evans and Pastor Charles Jenkins. Under the leadership of Pastor Sharp, Fellowship Chicago has experienced astonishing growth in all aspects of ministry, in spite of the COVID-19 pandemic. After suspending in-person worship in March of 2020, Fellowship launched The Virtual Ship, which is a virtual extension of the church's ministry which engages an average weekly audience of 25,000 people. Sharp unrelentingly believed that although the building was closed, the church was still open. While Pastor Reginald Wayne Sharp Jr. is mostly known for his preaching ministry, those closest to him know that he values quality time with family and friends, that he is a committed student of theology and homiletics, and believes in the virtue of kindness. In December 2015, Pastor Sharp married the gifted and talented Rihanna Sullivan Sharp. Together, they serve in ministry and currently live in my hometown, Chicago, Illinois. gets the glory no one else gets the praise there is nobody like Jesus why don't you lean on your neighbor tell him say neighbor there's nobody like the Lord everything that happened to me that was good tell somebody the Lord did it, it says this Oh, 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 oh,
Save my soul. Like you. Oh, no one. No one. Like you. No one. No one. No one. Like you. I said no one. No one. No one. No one. No one. No one. I can't find him. No one. Nobody that can rock me. No one. I can't find no one. Nobody that can. No one, no one, no one, none like you, nobody like you, nobody like you, no one at all like you, no one at all like you. Like you, Lord. Like you. Ooh, Lord. I can love me. Can love one me more time. Like you do. No one has. No one at all. Like you, she. Like you. Can love me like you do. Can love me like you do. Hallelujah. Would you bow with me? With me for a word of prayer. God, we thank you for your presence. There is really no one like you in all the earth. And so, God, we pause to say thank you. We pause to give your name the praise. We pause because if it had not been for you, we would have been in our graves a long time ago. So for grace, for mercy, we say thank you. We thank you that early this morning when the sweet scintillating sunshine tiptoed across our faces, we realized that we were recipients of brand new mercies. We thank you that you didn't give us today yesterday's mercies because today required a new set of mercies. And we thank you that you're so faithful that you give us exactly what we need every day. Now, God, on this night of revival, simply have thine own way, Lord. Move this frail, feeble preacher out of the way and allow your Holy Spirit to do whatever you need to do in First Baptist tonight. Thank you for this worship service that has already restored our souls. Now, God, let your word do some work in us as well. We want to be on the outside and the inside. We want it to align. We want our interior life and our exterior life to align so God help us today unlearn relearn and learn some things that would help us be better in the name of the one who can still turn water into wine in the name of Jesus that we pray let everybody say amen amen and amen can you hug two or three people tell them something good is going to happen tonight come on hug two or three people tell them something good is going to happen tonight. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Do you believe what you just said tonight? Well, if you believe it, put those hands together and give God praise like you know. Something good is going to happen tonight. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I just want to say thank you all so much for having me tonight to come to First Baptist Church Denby. And I'm excited to be here tonight and I'm honored that my 
my brother with all of the preachers that he knows and all of the contacts that he has in his phone, he decided to invite his brother from the south side of Chicago to come hang out in Virginia with you all today. Can we celebrate our pastor tonight? Come on, let's celebrate him. We thank God, we thank God, we thank God, we thank God. We thank God for Pastor Wolford and we want to celebrate Lady Lay tonight. Come on. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate her. These are not just preachers. He's not just a preacher to me, just not a pastor. She's just not a random first lady to me. They are friends and family. And, uh, and I'm so glad to see what the Lord has done. And First Baptist, aren't you happy God sent y'all a cool, intelligent, anointed pastor like Pastor Wolford? I mean, what a blessing. And to this choir tonight, Norfolk State represent tonight. Come on, let's show them some love. Pastor Riddick, come on, let's give it up. Nobody like him, nobody like him. God bless you. Man, I'm just, I'm just happy to be here. I really don't want to preach. Y'all have sung me happy. If he would have done, if he'd have said, great God, one more time, I'd have been under the pew. And it would have taken every usher in this church to pull me from underneath the pews. I was done right after that. I'm excited to be here to celebrate in revival with you. And I want to thank LaToya for the excellent way she helps uh, administrate and help her pastor keep things together. She's the reason I'm here tonight. I want to thank you so much, LaToya. And to your anointed husband and to your anointed family. Come on, let's celebrate all of them. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I'm going to jump into this word because the, the night is beckoning for her children and I don't want to be before you long. I just want to preach for about two hours and uh, I just want to preach for about two good hours and, uh, and then I'm going to get out of your way. Whoever is over the sound, just give me a little bit more in my monitors, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. I have to preach tomorrow night in Richmond and, uh, and I'm, I'm horse on my own. It has nothing to do with y'all. It's just me trying to make sure preachers understand amen preachers understand thank you so much thank you so much and to all the preachers in the house help me thank God for all the men and women of God in the house God bless you <clears throat> it's an interesting season for me um, I've, I've experienced so many losses over the last few months and I'm grateful for grace I used to preach about some things because I heard other preachers preach about them. And I used to preach some things because it was in the Bible. But now I preach because I know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and the older you get, when you say God is a keeper, you're just not quoting scripture. You're testifying about the reason why you have been sustained through difficult seasons. There's some other you in the room that can say, preacher, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you, you live long enough, you understand. I'm getting goosebumps trying to explain this, but you live long enough, and certain songs and certain scriptures have new meaning. And I've preached from this psalm before, but never before has it meant what it means to me now in this season. I want you to come with me to the third psalm, the third psalm, verse 3. Stand with me in honor of God's word. And I want you to stand with me so that when you go home you can say the preacher moved me <laughs> Psalm 3 Psalm 3 verse 3 out of the King James Version reads like this but thou O Lord art a shield for me my glory and the lifter up <laughs> of mine head one more time but thou O Lord are a shield for me my glory and the lifter up of my head I want to talk today from this thought very simply it's just one of them days thank you you may be seated I said exactly what you thought I said I know I have some English teachers and some grammarians in the room 
that was a pastor, you should have said it's just one of those days. But that's not what Monica said. Monica said it's, it's just one of them, D-E-M, days. If y'all put this on YouTube, write it right. It's just one of them, D-E-M, days. If you make CDs or cassettes or DVDs, put on the cassette. It's just one of them days. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know what the preacher's talking about. Tell them sometimes it's just one of them days. <laughs> That's what Monica said, the songwriter. It's just one of them days that a girl goes through. Uh, it's, it's just one of them days. I want to borrow her words today because sometimes as Christians, you will have just one of them days and I don't care how saved you are I don't care how many hymns you have memorized I don't care if you eat Genesis for breakfast and Revelation for dinner you will have one of them days and you know what's ironic to me Pastor Wolford is that this year 2024 is a leap year because this year does not just have 365 days, this year has 366 days because there was a, a day added to the month of February. Normally February, my birth month, only has 28 days, but this year it has 29 days and that one day makes this a leap year. It just, just one day changes everything. It's amazing to me. What is the purpose of a leap day and a leap year? Well, the reason why we have a leap year is because in the 16th century, Pope Gregory decided he wanted to keep Easter in spring. If you don't have a leap year, your seasons will get out of sync. Uh, literally, meteorologists suggest that if you don't have one day every four years added to the calendar, that in 100 years, the calendar will be off by 24 days. And in 700 years, you will have Christmas in summer, and you will have summer in December. So literally, to keep the seasons in sync, you need one day that comes every four years to make sure the cyclical nature of the calendar stays in sync. And I hear God saying that not just leap day does that, but there's some days that God allows to do the same thing for us. There's some days that come in our lives to make sure the seasons stay in sync. Some days have to come into our lives to keep us in sync. If every day was sunshine, you would be in a drought. And if every day rained, you would be in a perpetual flood. But Frankie Beverly May said it's joy and pain, it's sunshine and rain, and the mixture and the blend of the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, the ins and the outs, the hot and the cold, literally helps you stay synchronized in your purpose. Who am I talking to? It's some of you that have been wondering, why am I dealing with so many days that are so heavy? Why do I have so many days where if it ain't one thing, it's another? Why do I have so many days where it's so much stress and it's so much to do and you can't catch up to yourself? You ain't trying to catch up to others. You're just trying to catch up to yourself. And, and then there are people that have the nerve to say, I called you and left you an email and I left you a voicemail and you haven't responded yet. And you want to say, baby girl, if you knew all I was balancing, you would apologize for calling me. And then some of y'all saying you didn't you weren't up during worship. You you didn't you weren't really active and demonstrative and energetic doing worship. If you knew the kind of days that I've been having, if you knew the stress that I was managing, y'all would give me a trophy just for showing up tonight. Yeah, don't look at me talking about I'm low energy. Yes, I am low energy. And I really had to battle if I wanted to come tonight because it was a battle between being in the pew or being in my bed. And the bed sometimes look a whole lot better 
than being in anybody's pew. Can I talk to some real Christians who've had some heavy days, some intense days, some stressful days, some days where your haters outnumbered your supporters, where your bills were higher than the days of the month, where your energy was low but your responsibilities were high. Have you ever had some of them days? Well, early in the sermon, I need to tell you that God has allowed some days to hit you because God is trying to keep you in sync with his purpose for your life. If every day was perfect and pristine and a scoop of bluebell vanilla ice cream and cookout milkshake and Chick-fil-A number ones with Polynesian sauce on the side, if every day was perfect, you would be arrogant, conceited, and you would not have a prayer life but you let some hell walk up in your house you let some enemies get on your track you start walking through the valley of the shadow of death and all of a sudden your prayer life increases your worship increases and while you like sexy red and jay-z you know how to turn it on some music that'll get you through the storm trouble don't last always anybody better because of some days you've had in your life it's good that I was afflicted because I learned God's statues many of the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers us out of them all if you ain't had rough days you wouldn't know God as a deliverer if you were never sick you wouldn't know God as a healer if you were never broke you wouldn't know God as a provider if you were never lonely you would never know God as a keeper who in here can take three seconds early in the message and praise God not just for the days that felt good but praise God for all the days because surely goodness and mercy shall follow me not just on my good days but all I'm preaching to somebody tonight that's having just one of them days where you got to go to a funeral you never imagined you had to attend you just having one of them days where they're passing out pink slips and you don't know where your next job is coming from. Having one of them days where your financial aid needs first aid. Having one of them days where you can't wait for the semester to be over because if you get one more paper to write, your nerves are going to crack up. Have you ever had just one of them days? Well, in this psalm tonight, David is having one of them days because his own son Absalom is trying to take over the kingdom. That's a mess when you got family members that you can't trust. I know that's only David because surely nobody else in this room can relate to the fact that sometimes the most trifling people in your life got your last name. I know uh, that, uh, I know that's only David. I, I, I know it's only David. David is king. But his son Absalom is trying to become king out of sync. And so he's literally trying to usurp the kingdom from his father. But he doesn't just do it by himself. He knows that there's some people that are not pleased with David's leadership. So he does what good people do. I wanted to say another word, but I'll say people tonight. Uh, he, yeah, he does what good people do when they don't like you. They find others that don't like you because they're too cowardly to just not like you by themselves. So they got to corral a group to go against you because they could never face you by themselves so they got to get others that feel the same way they feel and then they speak up and say we feel no it really was you but you were too coward to say it was you am I talking to some real people or not and, 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 and David in verse 1 if you won't walk backwards in Psalm 3 go to Psalm 3 it's right they said Lord how are they increased that trouble me Many are they which say of my soul, there's no help for him in God. He has countless foes, F-O-E-S. It's just another word of saying he has countless enemies. He has contamination in his family because his own son is trying to take his throne. He has uh, consistent frustration because he said many. And, and, and it's easy in your life when it's just one thing or just two things, but when it's many bills and it's many stressors and it's many complications and it's many breakups and then you get back together then it's many breakups then you get back together then it's many breakups then it's many people in church you can't trust and then it's many people who are fake. It's hard when it becomes many. 
he, he has countless foes. He has contamination in his family. He has consistent frustration. He has concerns about his faith because now his enemies are saying in verse 2, it's in your Bible as you tore it out, there is no help for him in God. It's bad when the people think even God won't help you. And after he realizes these consistent frustration, he has, he has some concerns about his faith. He has contamination in his family. He has countless foes. He, he slips out of verse 2, and there's a word in your Bible that says Selah. And right over there on the side, most scholars, some scholars agree that Selah, S-E-L-A-H, is a musical notation that means stop, pause, think about it. He's thinking about how many enemies he has. He's thinking about how much his, uh, his enemies are, 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 are advancing against him. He's in panic mode. He has angst and anxiety. He's, he's paranoid. He doesn't know who he can trust. His own family is against him. Countless foes, contamination in the family. He has concerns about his faith. And, and, and he has consistent frustration but he goes off to the side and gets by himself and, and, and he just has a moment where he stops, pauses and thinks about it and, and sometimes in your life with everything going on in your life you got to pull away and park and pause and just stop, pause, think about it because if you stop, pause, think about it long enough you will stop looking around and you will look up and say but thou O Lord or a shield for me. You just miss your shout. See, some of y'all been looking around at everything everybody else has been doing. You've been counting how bad it is, how awful it is, but every now and then on one of them days, you ought to stop looking around and look up and say, but you are a shield. You are my glory. You are the lifter of my head. I'm glad he had a Selah moment, Pastor, because that Selah moment allowed him to straighten up his perception in the middle of his panic. And when you're having just one of them days, there's a couple things I need to tell you that David did and we have to do. And do y'all want to know what you have to do on just one of them days? Now, I ain't had, I ain't had really breakfast, lunch, or dinner, so if y'all don't want me to preach it, just go and tell me now. But if you want to know, holler back at me and say, help us, preacher. Well, number one, when you're having one of those days, number one, you got to understand this, and we're not going to walk logically into the text. We're going to back in the text. We're going to reverse in the text. We don't want to deal with the fact that it says shield, glory, lifter. Let's go over there to the end where it says lift of my head, and then we're going to back into the verse. Y'all down with that? We, 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 yeah, we're going to back into this thing tonight because the first thing you got to understand is that God switches your perspective. Go on and tell your neighbor, God has switch your perspective. Uh-huh, if you're back into verse 3, it says you're the lifter up of my head. I like that right there. Because when you are going through difficult days, it's so easy to hold your head down. It's so easy to feel the weight of life on your shoulders. I remember in December, uh, December 4th, my dad was found dead in his house. After not showing up to work, he's found dead. I talked to him, saw him two weeks prior, and on December 4th, on Founders Day, I get a call around 6 p.m. that we don't think your dad is here anymore. That shook me, caused me to hold my head down. Had to leave Chicago, walked away from my church, for three weeks just to try to eat, find inner equilibrium to help my family get through the shock of a 61 year old man who's found dead because of complications of diabetes and then 27 days after my dad dies my aunt dies of a rare leukemia and she was only 63 or 64 so on December 4th I lose my dad on December 31st going into the new year I lose my aunt she was that special aunt that was the aunt you ended Thanksgiving dinner with because she didn't mind sipping with you. I know y'all saved. It's okay. She was that cool aunt that let, it, that let me relax. And I wasn't reverend nothing when I was over her house. I was little Reggie when I was over her house. And I'm, I'm going to miss Auntie Delphine. And here I am trying to get back to the pulpit. But my head is down. People waiting on me to revive you. And I walked in here needing revival myself. 
God said don't worry about your head being heavy don't worry about your head being down sharp it's still rough you still grieving you still processing but I am the lifter of your head and I don't need to preach long right here I just need about 30 of y'all to holler back at your boy and say I'm a witness God will lift your head he's the best he's the best head rest you've ever had he will literally strengthen your muscular system in your neck and when you think you got to use your own power to lift your head God will say nope I lift it for you Psalm 121 says I will lift up my eyes not to the White House not to my boss not to my supervisor not to my 401k but I will lift up my eyes to the hills has anybody ever been lifted by the Lord has he ever switched your perspective off of bills and mess and enemies and grief and disappointments and gloom and disaster and pick your head up? I hear God saying, Tupac, not the only one that want all eyes on me. You got to keep all your eyes on God. He's the lifter. And I'm telling you, you got every reason to hold your head down truthfully. Because Donald Duck, excuse me, Donald Trump could be. He could be president again. That makes you hold your head down. Earthquake just hit a few days ago in the Northeast region. That make you hold your head down. Silly Christians make you hold your head down. Just, I mean, just silly, just absolutely. Immature people. Who, who have nothing on their mind but a lot in their mouth. They're not thinking, but they're still speaking. It makes you just, it just, it's exhausting. Everybody thinks that what their opinion is matters now that we have social media. It's exhausting. This club Shannon Sharp culture, club Shay Shay, where everybody wants to air out everything they've ever known about everybody. That's dangerous because it's cool when it's somebody else, but what happens when it's your turn? But God said with everything going on in the world, you still can hold your head up because God will switch your perspective. And I remember my granddaddy came to visit me in Chicago. And when you come, Pastor, you, we'll probably put you at this hotel called the Royal Sinesta. Now, it's a great hotel. The problem is the Trump Tower is right in front of it. And I thought I was doing something fancy. I brought my granddaddy from Decatur, where it's greater, Lithonia, where they own you down in Georgia. And I put him up in a suite last Easter after my grandmother died in February last year. And I wanted him to get away and get a nice suite. He said, it's a nice suite. Uh... But every time I look out the window, I see T-R-U-M-P staring at me. He says, so what I had to do, Reggie, is I decided to look up. Ooh, y'all sleep. And he said, I decided to focus on the beauty of the sky instead of the ugliness of the sign. I don't know who's in the room today, but God is saying, look up. I know you got bills, I know you have a diagnosis, but tell your neighbor, look up. Because if you look up, the keeper is still on duty. The sovereign Lord is still able to keep you from falling. Tell somebody, look up. On them days, God will switch your perspective. But on them days, as we back into the text, God will stabilize you under pressure. Because right there in the middle of verse 3 says, But thou, O Lord, art my glory. And see, preachers, when I first preached that, I thought that when he said my glory, that means God is my honor. God sustains my reputation. And I mean, that'll preach, though. God is my honor. God is my reputation. No matter what you say about me, what you think about me, God is my glory. And that was cute, but it wasn't correct. Because the word glory in Hebrew is the word kavod. Let the church say kavod. That word kavod means glory. It literally means the weight of God. Uh, uh, glory is like gravity. And uh, when God's glory comes in the room, it's like a weight. It's a gravity. So what keeps you from floating out of your seat right now is gravity. 
and what keeps you from floating away and just giving up and just throwing your hands up and floating under the pressures of life is God's glory is a gravity that keeps you grounded preach sharp I'm trying and some of y'all sitting up in here tonight trying to look cute I dare you to stop acting and give God glory for his glory that's kept you grounded with everything you got on you somebody would have given up weeks ago but his glory grounded you it was a gravity it was a weight that made your weight lighter God's weight makes my weight manageable and David said with everything I got going on he's my glory so when you're in the sanctuary and you hear somebody say Lord send your glory what you're really saying is Lord send your gravity to ground me y'all still ain't feeling me anybody been grounded in a season that almost took you out uh, so a couple Sundays ago I get in the closet at my office trying to hang my coat up and y'all the whole rod collapses in the middle of the closet I know that's only happened to the preacher but that's a bad day when all, I mean robes and jack, I mean it was 3,000 articles of clothing on the rod. But I just added one more weight to the rod and it fell. I gotta go preach, I don't have time, clothes are everywhere in the office. And I called one of the maintenance staff guys in my office, I said I don't know what we're gonna do about this, but I gotta preach. And he, he, he quickly went in and said, Pastor, let me look at this. He went in and he, he assessed the situation real quick. He said, Pastor, I don't know who installed these rods and these brackets, but they didn't put no anchors in the wall. <laughs> me with my non-handy self, what's an anchor? He said, no, you never put a screw in the wall without putting the anchor in first. You put the screw inside the anchor and the anchor expands because it grips the wall and what allows the rod to hold a weight y'all keep sitting there you're gonna wake up in a minute what allows the rod to hold a weight is that it's anchored in the wall come here some of y'all are alive right now because God has been an anchor that grounded you with all the weight you got on you can you shake your neighbor's hand like you're gonna shake it off and say neighbor the reason I'm here is because God grounded me. God is my anchor. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day, still the hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore. But if the storm don't cease, if I was at fellowship, they'd hit E flat right there. And if the wind keep blowing in my life my soul has been I know you gotta go to the doctor but you been I know you gotta finish the semester but you been I know you gotta pay some bills that you don't have the money for but your soul has been I know they see cancer but I see a scripture he was wounded for my transgressions high five somebody say I've been anchored you didn't high five nobody I said high five them and say I've been anchored 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 because when you have in just one of them days you got to remember God will stabilize you under pressure and I know it's everything is floating. I know everything is coming. I know things are in your face that you can't fix. But when you can't fix what's around you, remember what's in you. My soul, excuse me, I'm getting happy and I don't care who knows it. I said my soul. And so I've been watching I've been watching the service tonight. Some of y'all irritated because of who you sit behind because they've been up and down the whole night. It's written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. And you done made up in your mind, I ain't never going to sit behind her again. I can't see 
she just stand up over everything. They saying she stand up. He rocking and waving. Let me tell you something. If you don't know what God has anchored somebody through, you don't get to determine how much they shout tonight. If I were you, I'd look at my neighbor and say, get ready for more. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, oh, and all, all right, all right. He, God switches our perspective. God stabilizes under pressure. But here's the last one. God is a shield for your protection. I didn't say God will give you a shield. I said God is a shield. I didn't say God's going to shield you. I said God is the shield. Because the text says, but Thou, O Lord, remember that King James Version adds a T, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. All it means is are, but I like King James Version sometimes. Isn't it so poetic and just extra? Thou art. If I say it black, I say it like this. You is my shield. So, 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 if you've ever been shielded, I ain't got to really preach to you. Because you can run up here and take the mic and say, Pastor, I got it from here. I know that I know that I know some things would have gotten to me if God hadn't got between me and it. So the word shield in Hebrew is magain. Let the church say magain. And then the text says, but thou, O Lord, art shield for me. And in Hebrew, that's another fancy word, ba'adi. Ah, 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 Say that with me, ba'adi. Ah, so literally, thou, O Lord, art a shield for me is in Hebrew, magain, ba'adi. Ah, and you need to know this because when you think of shield, you think of that military accoutrement that the soldier would hold in front of his or her body. But magain in Hebrew does not just mean I'm shielded from the front. It means to be covered throughout and around. God is the only shield that covers front, back, up, down, left, right, side. Can you help me bother the enemy and shake your neighbor's hand and hold it and don't hold it like a dead fish. Use hand sanitizer later. Shake your neighbor's hand real quick and if they booze you and ain't being obedient, find you somebody else and let them shake their own hand and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got good news for you. You're covered head, shoulders, knees and toes. Tell somebody else you're covered head, shoulders, knees, and toes from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet every day of your life. You, you've been covered not just in the front. Job said there's a hedge of protection. All around me, is there anybody here that can lift your hands on a Wednesday night and give God glory that even on a bad day, he's still a good God? Is there, is there, oh, is there anybody that can shout tonight because your house is covered, your children are covered, your future's covered, your pastor's family is covered. Your church is covered. Your anointing is covered. Your son is covered. Your marriage is covered. Your diploma is covered. Your next is covered. This season is covered. And the next season is covered. I got to get in my seat. I got to preach tomorrow night. But on my way down to Richmond, 
I need to tell you on the fourth Sunday of February this year somebody left a death notice on the steps of my church it was a death threat and a few days after my birthday which was February 18th they left a note on the steps of the church during church that said this will be your last birthday they tell me about the note while I'm in church and I know when I get off my seat and get back in the pulpit I'm an open target because what if the assailant what if the perpetrator is sitting in the sanctuary and the first thought I had was there's no shield between me and the pew and God said there's no shield that you can see but every day of your life there is a shield that has you covered can you put your arm around your neighbor help me go to Georgia put your arm around your neighbor shake them and rock them rock them and shake them say neighbor you're gonna make it through these days and tell them be not dismayed whatever whatever betides you God will take care of you through every day all the way won't he do it have you tried him ain't he able so I've had some good days I've had some bad days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days and I've had some sleepless nights but when I look around and think things over my good days My good days outweigh my bad days, so I won't complain. Yeah, I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the mountains. Thank you for the losses. Thank you for the battles. Thank you for the enemies. Thank you for the tears. Thank you for the fears. I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I won't. Shake one more hand like you're going to shake it off. Shake one more hand like you're going to shake it off. And say, neighbor, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he's all right. Yeah. So we got to go. We got to go. But I pray
pray. I pray that when you have just one of them days again, that you remember, but you are a shield for me. You are my glory, and you're the lifter up of my head. Can I pray for you tonight? If this message was for you, I dare you to be courageous enough to get to this altar tonight. I don't care if you're in the choir. I don't care if you're in the back. Just get to the altar and ask your friend or your boo, come with me, come with me, come with me. Come with me to the altar tonight. And for these that are coming, can we just thank God for their courage? It takes courage. Come on, as close as you can. Come on, come close, come close. You never know what kind of day people are going through. I was reminded of that when I landed in one of the most gentle, spirited men I've ever met in my life is Deacon Canty. And I love his spirit, and I'm grateful that he picked me up because I, I was he was just a smiling and cool and laid back. And we just started talking, and he said, I have a grandson that's on his way to finish college, around 19 years old. He said, but pastor, his, that's how many kids, that, that's how we got there. I said, how many children do you have? He said, well, I lost a son that was murdered on Christmas. And if I didn't ask, I wouldn't have known. Because he's so full of joy, he was smiling. But just because people have a smile doesn't mean they don't have a story. And the Lord reminded me, be kind to everybody. You don't know what the person right beside you is going through. So since you don't know, look at them and say, I'm glad you made it through it. Whatever it is, I'm glad you made it through it. I don't have much of a voice, but the song on my spirit says, I've gone through the fire and I've been through the flood. I've been broken. I've been broken into pieces Seen lightning flashing from above But through it all Through it all I remembered That the Lord still loved me That he loved me and he cared And, he cared. and he'll never And he'll never He'll never put more on put me, more on me than, I, than I can be. Oh, I've gone, I've, I've gone through the fire, through the fire, and I've been, and I've been through the flood. I've been broken. Oh yes, I have into pieces. Saint lightning flash. Saint lightning flash. From above, from above, through it all, through it all, through it all I remember. I remember, I remember that he loved that me, that he loves me, that he loved me, and he and he cares, and he'll never, and he'll never, he'll never put more on me. Put more on me. Say no, he'll never, he'll never, he'll never put more on me. Say uh uh never, uh uh never. He'll never put more on put me. More on Say me. Mm, mm never, mm, mm, never. He'll never put more on put me. Put more on me than I, than I, oh Lord, can be. that As 
the musicians play softly. Touch your shoulder, touch your hand, touch your wrist, whatever you're comfortable with. But let that person know you're not standing here by yourself, daughter. You're not standing here by yourself, son. You're not standing here by yourself, mama, daddy. You're not by yourself. God, we come tonight not with a long prayer, but some of us have been having some of them days where if it ain't one thing, it's another. Life feels overwhelming. The world is in crisis. Wars and rumors of wars. So many are hurting in the land. Mental health crisis is on the rise. Finances are strained. Young people who are trying to get their footing are drowning in debt, trying to just do the right thing. Our families are hurting. Our children are lost. Our parents are tired. Grandparents are having to step up and raise another generation. Lord, we need you. Brokenness abounds. And yet you promised to never leave us and never forsake us. So God, tonight before we ask for anything, we really just want to thank you for everything. We thank you that you're still God, you're still a shield, you're still our glory, and you are the one, somehow through it all, that lifts up our head. We pray tonight for the person standing beside us. Give them strength, oh God. We pray for more grace, more peace, more wisdom, more endurance, more faith, more hope. And when it gets heavy, send your glory. Send your glory. When it gets heavy, send your glory that makes everything lighter. We lift our pastor and his wife to you tonight. We cover the Wolford household tonight. That while he leads us, you lead him. Be his glory. Be his lifter. Be his shield. Cover every mother, every father, every house, every child in the name of Jesus. And remind us, as the old folk used to say, Lord, everything is going to be all right. <laughs> remind us when it gets hard, everything is going to be all right. Forgive us for when we were wrong and give us grace to get up and try again. And whatever tomorrow brings, help us to know we're going to get through it because it's a day that you made and it's a day we can choose to rejoice in. In the name of the one who can still turn water into wine, in the name of Jesus, let everybody say amen. Amen. And amen. Hug everybody you can. Say you're covered. 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 As you go back to your seat, tell everybody you're covered, mother. You're covered, sir. You're covered, ma'am. Cry if you must, but you're covered. Fight if you must, but you're covered. Wipe your eyes, but you're covered. It's heavy, but you're covered. He'll never. No, he'll never. No, he'll never. No, he'll never, never put him on me. No, he'll never. No, he'll never. He'll never put him on me. Say, no, he'll never. Never put him on me. No, he'll never put him on me. Then I, then I can be. Give God your best praise for this word tonight. Come on, give God your praise. Listen, we're on our way out the door, but we won't leave without offering Jesus Christ. If there be one person in the room that says, I needed that word tonight, I need Christ, I need a church home, I need to make some changes. Don't delay. Tomorrow is not promised. But man, woman, boy, girl, walk out right now. And I would rather you 
have Jesus and not need him, then need him and not have him. If you're here and you need Christ, walk out. He's a shield. He's your glory. He's the lift of your head. If you need a church home, First Baptist Church Denby is a good place to call home. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. To God be the glory. If there's anybody else, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Let's welcome our sister. Come on, let's welcome her. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, we welcome you into the fellowship. God is great and greatly to be praised. We're going to put you in the hands of our intake ministry. Listen to me talking like I'm a member of this church. I don't know. What's it called? Intake, first touch, whatever it is. We welcome. Come on, let's thank God for our intake ministry. It's time to go home. If, if your pastor ever invites me again, I promise not to preach this long. But uh, can we close out on one of these old school numbers as we leave? There's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this way. Y'all know that song. If your soul's not angered it, you will. Come on, we're going home. There's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving. There you go. This way. If your soul not anchor it, you will surely. We close with the benediction I give every Sunday, the words of Jonathan McReynolds. May your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles show that you and I need God. May your battles end the way they should. And may your bad days prove that God is good. I pray your whole life keeps on proving that God is good. Hug somebody, say, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Peace, peace. I love you. There's a storm out on the ocean. See y'all later, and it's moving. Oh, if your soul's not You will surely Oh, drift away, Lord Drift away, 